I'm Matthew. And I'm Nate. And that's a cricket. And he's part of this too. <laughs> I don't even know if they 12. can hear that. Uh, they'll probably hear it. You probably won't hear it. I don't know. I hear it. Nate hears it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fitting. Sure. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know. We could be excited. We had, we had almost three views on the last episode. Nice. On YouTube. A lot more people get it through iTunes. Like we probably have like twenty five on iTunes. Nice. But That's that not... doesn't even put us like in the bottom tiers. Um, there's so many podcasts out there. What the average viewership is is like us. Okay. Good. Which, we're average. We're average. Nice. That's what I've always been told. Um. So this is episode twelve, uh, season one finale. I guess. Yeah. It's kind of sad, but at the same time, I don't know. I made a sad story. <laughs> well, I made a funny story, I hope. <laughs> I feel like I'm not as funny as I used to be, so it's probably not as funny as I used to be. Okay. But I don't know. It kind of I kind of let it do its own thing, so I'm kind of happy with that. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, but I made a story. <laughs> well, as long as you made a story, right? I guess so. I mean, it'd been almost as funny as if you'd been like, "Hey, I drew a picture. Is that okay?" And I'd be like, hey, <laughs> "Hold up the microphone." <laughs> you guys hear that? That's perfect. That's good. Ah, uh, so what, what, your story. We should um, do a video podcast. Video pod. You know, some people do that. Uh, yeah, the guys over at Never Not Funny do that. Uh, the co-optional podcast is a video podcast. We could talk about that. Like, if you if you really want to, like, I don't. Oh, but go ahead. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say because if like you wanted to do a video podcast, I could get behind that. Way like, less editing involved in the video podcast. Oh yeah, like, you got to think like. Well, see, I wasn't see like you're thinking video podcast, and you're thinking like like continue, where there's like a lot of editing and stuff, right? No, I was, I'm oh. thinking like. Like, like the co-optional podcast is like, uh, they don't edit anything. It's just oh, them talking. Oh, really? See, yeah. I, I would, I would be down with editing. It'd be a nightmare. But whatever. I don't know. I like editing. Yeah, no, it's fun. I was thinking of, have you ever seen, probably not, but have you ever seen the episode of Space Ghost where a guy just, no, like, it's two guys like like me and you, and one of them just is telling the story of a previous episode, and the other guy is drawing what was happening in that episode. As yes. Talk. Yeah, okay. Yes. See, I was thinking like that, where it'd be like, I would tell you four or five scenes that you would need to draw before, and it would just be my story, and then you showing those pictures. Okay. But that's, you know, that's just a, an idea I'm kicking around right now because you were like video podcast and i was like i better think about how to do that (laughs) okay whatever that cricket's really getting it on or really trying to get it on right i'm sorry it doesn't bother me i hope it doesn't bother you guys out there anyone with the with the headphones on being like man that cricket's really in my ear hole uh we'll try to fill it with fiction soon enough (laughs) (laughs) nice I hope I've got the energy. I didn't have the energy in the last episode, and I feel really bad. I feel bad about the last episode, guys. I'm sorry about that. Really? Yeah, dude. I came in really low energy. I had it by the end. Like, by the end, I was there. But, like, that first bit, I was not there. Mm. It's like, eh, welcome to Rhapsody. It's like 11 or whatever. I don't know. I, I, I Piss poor performance by me, and then piss poor performance by me again by not editing it and getting it up on time. <laughs> Especially because I mentioned, man, this is going to release two days before Labor Day. And then it released on Labor Day. More fool eye. <laughs> Whatever, so, man. So I'm going to do a better job this week. I'm going to put forth more effort for the season finale. Because you guys deserve it. All somewhere between 1 and 25 of you. Cool. So, Nate. 
Yeah. You, you wrote a story for this, I hope. I did. Uh, what what would you draw from? Like, what, um, what, what helped you write this story? Uh, mm, I don't know. I don't know, man. <laughs> you didn't have anything in the back of your mind? You didn't listen to any music? No, like, just probably uh, a high school story that I read once, probably a little bit. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I don't want to say which one it is because it'll kind of, like, ruin it. <laughs> oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. Maybe tell me at the end. Yeah. Um, And then I wanted, I don't know, man. I had more plans to make it better, but it didn't. <laughs> I'm sure it's fine. I, I love your stories, uh, and as do our audience. Uh, viewership went down when Travis showed up and you left, so that proves it. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so for my story, I uh, I drew on a lot of things. Like I don't know. I've been I've been like I said, sitting on this commoner's uh, prompt for a while now. Yeah. Like, when I started writing prompts down, like, because I knew I needed to have them ready. Like, I needed to have them at hand for when you and I got to the end of the podcast, so I wasn't going, uh, uh, uh. So I, I thought up a bunch, I wrote down a bunch, and then, you know, by episode eight, I was out. Uh, so, but one of the very first ones I wrote down was commoners. I've been wanting to do that, because it's like, you always get commoners as side characters. Um, rarely as, an, like, an, maybe an ancillary character. But never as like a main character. Yeah. Oh, I guess by the prompts, the way we do the prompts, you didn't have to make it your main character. But I wanted to. I wanted to be that, like that. Right. So, yeah, I've been thinking about this for a while. I wanted to be like some of my favorite movie writer guys. Like, like I wanted to be like Joss Whedon or Kevin Smith or... Quentin Tarantino, where it's like very dialogue driven and heavy and fun. Well, I feel it is fun. Um, you know, like if I could make it be like Pulp Fiction meets Firefly meets Clerks, then I'm in. I'm in the good ballpark. Hmm. I like it. I mean, I those are all I, good movies. I don't know if I did that. Oh, but I. I I tr- it's funny actually because uh, I came up with about ten stories uh, during this week, hmm. and I optioned out at least four of them to the point where it's like I could tell someone and they could write what I wanted, you know, like because I you know I was saying like I could write that story, like, I had enough I could write that, I have enough I could write that story if I have a word, so it's not really fair because I can write a story, but like I could tell it to someone and they would get the gist of it, and I was that ready with those stories. The very first one actually was incredibly Monty Python-ish. Cool. Unintentionally. Like it was like it was I was gonna it was gonna be named Guard Duty One. I, I had a title for that one before I had the story. Um and the idea was like it was two guards and they're just like guarding this gate and like nothing's happening, right? Because they're guards. And that's what happens when you're a guard. Nothing happens. Yeah. Like you need the guards for that one event that might happen, not for, you know, they're not constantly busy. And so it's like, they're like chat, like, you know, they chat and like a really shortly into it, one of the guard changes because it's, you know, like you change one guard at a time so that you always have one guard posted. And like the guard that gets changed in is like a new guy and the guy's like, doesn't know if he trusts him. And he's like, ah, who are you then? Like, oh, I'm a new guard. I'm Tim. Like, Tim, I don't know any Tims. And it just, like, in my head was just super Monty Python. At some <laughs> sounds... point, Tim's trying to sell an action figure. It's like, ah, I made this action figure of myself. What are you doing, Tim? Like, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Because we're gods. He... It looks a lot like you. I'll sell it to you. <laughs> it's just like, it, I, I don't know what I was doing, man. He made an action figure of himself. That's a little, uh, that's a little vain, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, Tim's a vain guy. All right. He doesn't exist. Because these other characters, they exist. Right. Um, Well, you haven't wrote, written his story yet, apparently. <laughs> and, you know, I did other ideas. Um, In fact, this I, this story, literally, I was going to have... I was going to have this happen, and then this happen, and then this happen. And then I got into the very first conversation. 
And just without even thinking about it, I wrote the conversation to the point where it became like six pages long. Oh my god! <laughs> and it's just like, oh shoot, I accidentally did that thing I wanted to do. <laughs> I guess that's the story, right? I guess that's a story. Um, and it's great because, and you know, you'll see why it, I I find it great at least. And if you don't, I'll explain it to you at the end because I have to because I'm neurotic. Right. Um, but like. Ultimately, I uh, I lost where I was going. All right, that's fine. It's fun, and I like <laughs> it. And it wasn't what I wanted when I started. And at the end, I like it more than what I had. I was going with something more. I don't know, like what in my head it was like casino almost, like the movie casino, like the movie casino. Yeah, like there was gonna that. be a, a almost like a mobster style scene. Where it's like these two guys are merchants, right? And they're selling this thing, and this other person starts selling a similar product, and they go to their stall and just start breaking their shit. Like, hey, don't try to sell <laughs> shit like us. And I was like, this is dumb. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. like I wanted, I wanted guys like, like you know, uh, John Travolta and uh, Sam Jackson from Pulp Fiction, like, like. I didn't want to, well, although I guess they do have that silliness and that seriousness. Yeah. I guess I wanted Dante, Dante and Randall. Okay. And that's what, that's what I ended up with, I think. <laughs> cool. You should go first, man. No. I don't no. Well, I don't know. Like, do you want me to? No. Why, why, why ruin it? <laughs> Maybe we'll do that for season two. We got to change something up. Yeah. If there is a season two. I want there to be a season two. Yeah. Let us know if you want there to be a season two. (laughs) Yeah. All right. My prompts were Frost Lord and Commoners. Uh, And I, throughout the time writing it, was like, you know what? Frost Lord, forget that. Ice Lord instead. So (laughs) I I didn't name anyone a Frost Lord. Um, My story is called The Last Ice Lord. (laughs) Okay. I have I have problems with my names. I name things shitty. Um, here we go. Not gonna <laughs> be any better. All right. Crickstrack the Ice Lord let out a mighty snore. High atop the mountain, overlooking the snowy tower of Frisdril, perched a castle of ice. In the highest room, on the tallest tower, slept the wizard. The sun peeked through the window, rays of heat slowly melting the frost off of the old man's stark white beard. The Ice Lord opened his glowing white pupilless eyes. Today wasn't going to be a good day. It was sacrifice day, which meant that Crickstrack was tasked with choosing a commoner from the village to sacrifice to appease the Ice Titans. He had been doing this ritual once a year for as long as he or anyone else could remember. No one knew exactly what would happen if the ritual wasn't completed, but most were too scared to find out. The Ice Lord stood up out of bed and cracked his bony back. He had been getting up in years and thought about how long his body could keep this up. Most days he just slept, and he rarely ventured out of his castle. As the last living Ice Lord... He was the only one who could act as a mediator between the three great nations of the realm and the Ice Titans. 
Ooh, Ice Titans. Krikstrak stood before the staircase leading down to the bottom of the mountain and began his descent. After a few steps, the wizard became frustrated. At this rate, I'll be late for the ceremony, he thought. He motioned with his hands, and the twisted, winding staircase turned into a twisted, winding ice slide. <laughs> Krikstrak slowly sat down in the ice, slow, uh, still holding onto a defrosted step. He let go, sending him careening towards the bottom. Rushing down, Craddock felt alive. He had spent too much of his time locked away, only going out to complete the terrible ceremony. He felt ashamed he was unable to do anything but kill innocent people to prevent the next ice age. But then again, no, no other ice lord was able to stop the ice titans. And with him being the only one, there was no hope left. The ice lord safely landed near the entrance of the quiet village. As he walked toward the center, he was greeted by all of the town folks he walked past. They accepted him, even knowing that he brought death. But also knowing of the millions of lives he had saved keeping the Ice Titans at bay. The town looked like a proper festival. Krikstrak hated it. The townspeople saw it as a welcoming to the Ice Lord that would save humanity from the Ice Titans, but Krikstrak was only focused on the innocent commoner who he was about to sacrifice. He made his way up to the stage in the center of town. The crowd greeted the old wizard with cheers. Good morning, are we ready? The crowd responded with more cheers. May I have the ceremonial hat? A man stepped on stage and handed Craddock's a deep top hat. The Ice Lord reached inside and pulled out a small piece of paper. His heart sank. Carolyn Devantes. The crowd roared and music began to play as a shy little girl stepped on the stage. Oh no. Let's hear it for little Carolyn, the wizard said in the most disappointing voice he could muster. Carolyn's face beamed red as the crowd cheered her on. Hi, Carolyn. Uh, Krikstrak greeted. Hi, she said, hiding behind the old man's robes. The Ice Lord sidestepped, revealing Carolyn to the audience, and knelt down beside her. It's okay, Carolyn. Don't worry about them. Just focus on me. The timid child looked up at the old man. His face was grim and serious, but he managed to crack a sad smile. See what I mean about depressing? Man. Yeah, but uh, you got me. You got me entranced. Good. <laughs> like, I, I'm. I don't know. You usually do very not serious. Yeah. And I'm not gonna say like I'm glad to. No, I'm glad to see some serious stuff. I don't want you to change your style. But okay. It's kind of like when you get a movie from a guy who doesn't usually do that type of movie. Like getting a super serious Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> kind of like Fifty First Dates, where it's like. I could see the elements that make this funny, but at the same time, this is depressing. I'm, like, I don't know. I like to see you have a range, Nate, because you're a great guy. Cool. How old are you, darling? I was going to answer that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's okay. How old are you, darling? She held up three fingers on each hand. Six? He guessed. She nodded. That is a very pretty dress. My mommy bought it for me, she said quickly. I see. I've known your mother since she was your age. Are you ready, dear? She nodded, unsure of what he meant. The wizard stood up. From the high stage, he could see beyond the borders of the town where the field of ice sculptures were memorialized. It was an icy graveyard of the victims of the ritual turned into pure ice. It was the only way to appease the Titans. The wizard started to swirl his hands. Magical energy flowed from them. He held them high and looked at the young child. As soon as the energy coalesced, he blasted the young girl with it. But instead of turning her into an ice statue, it covered her with ice cream. Nice. Yummy! She cheered, ignoring her pretty dress as she dove into the delicious dessert. Jay, were you going to say something? What? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I, I said nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> Ice cream, you know. 
I can no longer live like this, shouted the Ice Lord. The crowd booed and hissed. Kill the child! You'll doom us all, they shouted. Oh no. The crowd started to rush the stage and Krikstrak held his hand high. The crowd paused. The Titans will get their sacrifice, he yelled. And with that, he uh, began to turn himself into ice. Ice traveled up his legs and further on until it reached his face. With his last breath, he let out his life essence. He exhaled a gold glow that traveled to Carolyn. She absorbed the power which penetrated into her heart. Her eyes glowed and her pupils disappeared. The color escaped her skin and she gained a fiery red aura. A blast of fire shot into the sky, parting the clouds. The ice tower upon the mountain started to crumble and the sun rays defrosted the snowy town. Carolyn, covered in fire, hovered in the air. Mommy, Daddy, she screamed. Her parents joined her on stage. What's happening? Carolyn, her father said knowingly. Krikstrak turned you into a fire lady. The sky opened up and the town heard the deafening roar of the ice titans. The end. Wow. Yeah, what do you think of that one? Ice titans. Fire ladies. Yeah, um, I, I have an issue, like, because I was like, ah, it's the opposite of Lord, because it's like, you Lady. know, Ice Lord, yeah. Yeah. Fire Lady. And Fire Lady doesn't have that punch. It doesn't. If she was a Fire Lord. Yeah. So I don't know what fire. to call her. Maybe I should. Maybe, maybe I should Lady just... of Flame. Lady of Flame. Maybe. But I don't know. I like the idea of like a six year old fire lady fighting ice titans. That's like my idea <laughs> that I didn't write. <laughs> uh, yeah. I wrote an origin story that no one cared about. No. Well, I liked it. Cool. Um, I, w- I want more. It was a little short. I want more. So you got to write the next part someday. Someday. Was that short? It felt short. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard when I'm not at a computer and I know how long I usually make them. Yeah. That could be so. wrong. I don't know. Maybe it was just riveting and like time flies when you're having fun. Yeah, hopefully it's that one. Yeah. Uh... So my story, my prompts were commoner and action figure. I named it The Night in Which Mistakes Were Made. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Is it, is it night and which? One of them is, but not the other. The n- <laughs> well, there's a play on words between one of those words. Okay. Um, and I'm not going to tell you, but you'll know by the end. Okay. Okay. Quinn Ladyfingers sat at his dining slash craft slash business table, slowly whittling a small statuette. Hunched over his work, he turned it slowly in his hands, carefully slicing and carving his way to the final product he wanted. This piece was shaping out to be a mighty fine lion. Well, at least it was an artist's interpretation of a lion. Quinn had never seen a lion before, but he had heard a lot about them, from their fur crowns to webbed feet to fire wings. Unsure of which qualities were real, he had settled for what he thought made the best figurine. Ultimately, it looked like a muscular house cat with a broad pair of antlers and a goat-like beard, which was probably close to the original. He set the piece down on the table and admired his work. Quinn had picked up whittling a few years ago, This was more out of necessity than hobby, though. Quinn and his partner-slash-best-friend Algo 
were licensed Lusheim merchants. Lusheim was the capital of the Tarian Empire, the sprawling human empire that had claimed the northeast quadrant of Mistvale. This capital, with its continent-famous arena, had very strict merchant and trade policies that required every merchant to have a license, which was fairly expensive and difficult to obtain, but hard to lose. Quinn and Algo had to sell just about everything they owned, as well as call in favors and bribe their way into acquiring one. Of course, now they needed to find something to sell. Quinn would whittle what he could each week, and Algo was constantly on the lookout for new projects or wares. Sometimes they'd sell on consignment, vendoring items from craftspeople who couldn't afford a license and taking a portion of the profits. The two scraped by, but selling other folks rugs and beads and hand-carved statues of animals that probably didn't exist wasn't going to make them rich. They needed to find the next big thing. At that thought, the front door of the two-room shack burst forth, the old worn hinges barely holding it to the wall. Standing there, framed by the doorway and shrouded by the midday sun, was Algo. His foot was at perfect door-kicking height, and he was clutching something in his hands. Quinn, my friend, I have just found us the next big thing. <laughs> the man sauntered over to the table and slapped down a jumble of sticks and straw and cloth. The whittler looked over the presentation briefly, then gave his partner a look that was equal parts curiosity and worry for the man's sanity. With a malicious grin, Quinn stated, I don't think forest debris is selling well this time of year. <laughs> debris? Algo asked in astonishment. Take a closer look before you insult my intelligence again. Quinn picked the piece back up and turned it over in his hands. There was definitely an order of logic to it. Sticks made a framework upon which cloth and straw were tied. A small bauble was affixed to the top. Uh, I give up, Quinn conceded. What is it? A real, magical voodoo doll, Algo explained. Zans! Quinn shouted, dropping the doll as if it had burned his skin just to touch it. You know Glavitus forbids the touching of accursed objects. How could you bring something like that into our house, let alone suggest I play part in creating more unholy relics? Okay, Algo started, putting his hands up in a pacifying gesture. First of all, no one cares enough about your little sand god to know all 500 of his tenants. It's 23. Right. And second, I didn't think you'd let some arbitrary rule set by an imbecile who played with rocks prevent you from making money. Glavitus turned a million boulders a million times to make the infinite sands of the Golden Wastes. He didn't just play with rocks. If you insult my god one more time, I will my next piece out of your bones. To punctuate this, he pointed the small knife at the other man. With a face as stony and expressionless as a massive boulder, Algo stared into the armed man's eyes and said, I bet he still has sand in his crack to this day. Quinn's eyes... <laughs> Quinn's eyes bulged as he took in a big breath of air. He stabbed his knife into the table before releasing a roaring bellow of laughter. Algo <laughs> joined his friend in the merry expulsion. After the laughter died down, the standing man took a seat on the bench across from his friend. He picked up the voodoo doll and looked it over. I have so many questions, Quinn declared after he had regained his breath. Let's start with, who's the doll cursed to? Me! Algo said. He held the doll beside his head. Can't you tell? <laughs> Quinn regarded the two briefly before nodding. The resemblance is uncanny. You know, I've always said you reminded me of forest debris. As he thought about this bit of information, Quinn raised a second question. How? Well, that's a bit more complicated, Algo said, working over the ideas in his head. So, I was out looking for consignments, with the usual clientele. When Wandra, you know, the old lady who makes rugs, Wandra told me about a new potion brewer in town. So naturally, I went over to see this new addition to our neighborhood to explain the trade laws and offer our services. Quinn interrupted, since you're not known for your altruism, I'm going to guess Wandra happened to mention this newcomer was a woman? Hey, Algo exclaimed. It hurts that you'd suggest I'd treat anyone differently just because of their gender. Also, it's my story. Let me tell it. With a big smile on his face, Quinn motioned for his friend to continue his story. All right, so I go to this location to meet this new person, and what do I find? 
the most beautiful, perfectly proportioned witch. You don't say. <laughs> I haven't yet. Listen, man, this lady was like the second coming of Bob's Lonnie. Like, her chest was big enough to fill an ogre's hand, and her hips were even wider. And this vision was just barely squeezing into her black robes. I'm sure I've mentioned how I have a weak spot for a witch in robes. I'm sure, Quinn confirmed, rolling his eyes. So, the doll? I'm getting there. You gotta respect the process. It's not about the destination, it's about the whole journey. I'm sorry. Please continue. Oh, Lorbrarian sexman. Since you asked so nicely. So, there's this Kirby witch. And she's not a swamp or bog witch, right? Her skin was a perfect pink color. They sat in silence as he reveled in his memory. So, she took me back to her personal coven, right? And it was all very businessy. We talked prices, and I went over what we could and couldn't sell. Then, when all of those details were settled, naturally, I asked to try her wares. I don't want to be selling a healing potion only to have a dissatisfied customer missing an arm come to complain at me. You don't care about our customers. Probably not. Besides, if he really only had one arm, I'd just kick his ass until he left. <laughs> there was a long, prideful silence then. So, what potion did you try? Well, she had a large assortment. Healing and energy, love potions naturally. So I asked her to share a passion potion with me. He leaned back on the bench with a satisfied smile. I'm not sure if we drank potions or just a bunch of bottled ale, but the passion part was totally there. Okay. Quinn was trying to piece together his friends last night, but felt he was missing some important pieces. So you slept with an overweight witch, then commissioned her to make voodoo dolls of yourself so that we can sell them to all of the people that are out there that want to hurt you. That's genius, actually. I'll take that one. How much? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. That's so funny I forgot to laugh. <laughs> she wasn't fat. She was deliciously thick, like Bob's Lonnie. Bob's Lonnie is kind of chubby. Wow. That's like racist or something. She's a fertility goddess, so she's curvy. Like large breasts to fill the babies and thick hips for childbearing. Algo motioned to his chest and waist as he spoke. Just because your god has to, like, eat cactuses or something doesn't mean the other gods can't have human proportions. All right, all right. You're not a farmer and don't want to be a father, so I'm not sure why you're so worried about defending a deity you don't even believe in. Hey, I'm just a defender of justice, Quinn. If someone's got to stick up for the weak and absent. Ah, yes, Algo the Faithless Paladin. How could I forget? I think the goddess of fertility needs your defense against non-attacks about as much as she needs you to objectify her. I was only complimenting her figure, not chaining her to my bed. I'll go pause a moment before adding, but I would totally do that, though, if she were into it. <laughs> he, looked, he looked skyward and winked. All right, all right, I don't need to see any of that. I like winking at a god. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Like, I give, I give Jesus thumbs up sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't need to see any of that. You still haven't explained the doll. Right. The doll. Algo stared at his tiny effigy. That's a funny story. I guess she took some of my hair after I passed out from exertion and made it. The next morning she threatened me with it, so I bought it off of her. Silence pervaded the small house. So, Quinn started slowly, working the idea over in his mind. How is your penis losing us money the next big thing? <laughs> That is the all-of-the-time thing? <laughs> Algo shrugged. I like to mix business and pleasure. But what I was thinking was this. Let's make dolls of the gladiators. Dolls? Yes. Your whittling skills could produce perfect likenesses of the fighters, and I could craft cloth bodies and wooden accessories. We'll make a mint. One problem, Algo. Kids don't have any money. Don't I know it, he said, exasperated. You know what they do have? Annoying, whining voices and parents with money. <laughs> Quinn rubbed his chin thoughtfully, then shrugged his consent. It's worth a try. I'd better get started. Who's the main event this week? Apparently some woman asked to challenge Spine Splitter, the giant. They say she has long dreadlocks. 
the end. Nice. Nice. It's prequel. <laughs> no, it's no. A, it's a side story. Side story. It's not a prequel. Love it because she killed Liver Luncher the first time. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was. Uh, it took place. No. Uh, oh. Okay. So you know what? Yeah. I don't even remember where that one took place. Like I made a, an arena town, but I don't know where the tournament of champions happens. You should rewrite that just enough so that it takes place. In like Lushai. a week before, oh. yeah. Nah, I don't. I like. See, I, I was trying to more or less link the the gladiator from the gnome story and yeah. the bard story. Okay. To so, to somewhere, you know, give because I kept talking about Lusheim for him all the time, and but I didn't. He doesn't even have a name, which I love. But uh, yeah. I, you know, I haven't talked about the city that he keeps saying he's from. But then I also didn't want to end without referencing back to either Cassandra or Annika since they're my favorite characters so far. Right. I liked it. I think your dialogue was uh was good. It was definitely entertaining. Yeah. And uh it was I don't know, it's like it's like realistic for your world, definitely. I yeah, like you think? Yeah. I mean Yeah. There wasn't anything too out of the ordinary I had to stop myself from saying dude a bunch. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I had dude in the, I had dude in my head every two minutes. I say dude way too much. We both say dude way too much because we are a yeah. product of the 90s. Dude. Man, Man. I fucking love Doug. <laughs> Doug, the show. Whoop, whoop. I, I can't do a hey, good, Hawk! can't do a good pork chop. I can't do a good uh I, know, I forgot his name now. Who was the green guy? Skeeter. No, Roger. Ske- Roger was no, green. No, 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 Roger Klotz. Roger was green. Skeeter, Skeeter was the was blue guy. He was like blue green. Mm, yeah, maybe. Anyway. Everybody's yeah, like honk honk. Yeah. <laughs> he just made a bunch of dumb noises. <laughs> he's kind of like us. Right. Exactly. So that was a good story, Matt. Thanks. This is good. I, I'm, I hope. I hope it's we actually... we both. I think we both did something different for our last, or well, the the season finale. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're expanding our horizons. We're giving people a taste. Like maybe they'll be like, "Whoa, that was different." Maybe the next one will be different too. We got to get them. Maybe if you're Jones and let us know. <laughs> Or if right. you listen, let us know. Yeah. Yeah, that one too. If you're not listening, also let us know. The more people Yeah, let us just know, be like, no, I don't want to listen to that shit. Like, I mean, there are, <laughs> what, 7 billion people? Yeah. Two have contacted us. Arguably yeah. one, because we don't know if, because it's two different places if the usernames are different. Get a hold of us. We like it. <laughs> We like you. It makes us happy, and we yeah. will talk to you and be your friends. Be our friend. We're we're friend. We're friendship material. We're not weird. Not not that weird. The cricket punctuates it. Is it still chirping up there? Are you not hearing that cricket? I got earphones on. Oh, how bad is it? It's. You know it what? It's bad. not bad now. During your story, he was wailing. Well, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. I'll do some fancy magic, and then we'll see. Yeah, dude, it's movie magic over here. That's that's episode 12, man. 12 episodes, 12 stories, 12 stories a piece. A piece. 24 stories total. Closer 12. closer to like 28. There was no I guess it wasn't 12 a piece. You missed out on two. There's 25 stories, right? Travis wrote one. Yeah. Like and then covered you for 2 weeks. Yeah. And then yeah. bailed on us. Oh. 
Why? Why isn't he? He should have just come back and done, didn't? Uh, yeah. I, he's like, I, I mentioned it to him, like, man, get that story finished before the finale. And he's like, well, it's like half done. <laughs> it's half done. <laughs> but I can bust it out in a half hour, right? <laughs> yeah, dude. He's all about being able to get that story done in an hour. Right. So I imagine, uh, he could have written it while we were talking and been good to play it here. Oh man, I fell asleep, uh, like two nights ago with, uh, like on a bed with the phone with the uh what do you call it the notepad oh yeah face. yeah <laughs> i like it i don't like I, I can't do that oh really like writing is way too intense for me oh <laughs> although i yeah i did do that playing a game on my phone and like i died because like i fell asleep and my finger tapped and i attacked like the wrong enemy it was oh it was great <sighs> Whew, excuse me. um yeah, it felt like I wrote that last story in my sleep. Oh, dang. Dang, you're so sorry. good. I wanted like, to make that joke. I'm sorry I ruined it. I ruin your jokes. Sometimes. Look forward to me ruining more jokes in season two. Yeah. <laughs> um. Knock, knock. Who's there? I don't remember. Dang. Um, keep Go ahead. <laughs> so, Nate and I were talking. Um, October's a busy month. Right, Nate. It's a busy month. Nate's uh, getting married early Ooh. October and then going on a honeymoon for like a week. Yeah, like a whole week. A whole week. Um, and then he's gonna come back, and then like the workplace he works at's gonna shut down because he does ninety percent of the work there, <laughs> and so he's gonna have to make up his missing week because they I don't know how they functioned a year ago. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so. <laughs> Oh, it's not douchey because I said it. Um, <laughs> and so he's going to be busy. Um, it's going to be really hard for us to start back up on October, like I had said. So Nate and I talk, and we're going to do special episode, not part of either season, single Halloween special, then probably come back mid to late November. All right. Right? Yeah. Sounds good. I want to I wanna do this. If you asked me yesterday, do you still want to do Rapsy Cast? I'd be like, you know, we don't have that many viewers. It's a <laughs> lot of work. I don't yeah. know. But getting to the end of this episode, I know I'm going to miss it while we're not doing it. Yeah. So if I can convince you to come back for season two, we're going to do it. I'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was going to say, though, we're, we're doing prompts. Prompts. So for this special episode, I think uh, a good idea for special episodes, we'll just both give one shared prompt. Ooh. So okay. I have one if you want me to give mine first or if you want to give No, yours. go ahead. Okay. So the prompt I was thinking for spooky, scary Halloween episode, crypts. Ooh. Spooky, scary. My prompt that I... I think is one of the scariest things in the world. Student loans. Well, <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. That's just mean. Um, no, my prompt is public transportation. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a hundred percent serious. <laughs> nice. Oh, geez. Nate, I love you. <laughs> All right. So you write you write a story about uh, people getting to a crypt by public transportation, like in the very beginning, and then it's all about the crypt. And I write a story about uh, people that are on public transportation trying to get to a crypt, but, <laughs> but it's all on the public transportation. So you're going to write medieval speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only movie I can think of that's set entirely on public transportation. Um. Yeah, <laughs> I can get down with medieval speed. I like it. So, to all of you who listen to us, however many you are, uh, we thank you, um, and we hope you join us for season two plus our special bonus episode. It's been a fun ride, and I hope you enjoyed it half as much as we did, because then you'll be a happy person. Yeah, I smile a lot when I record these. <laughs> it makes me feel good inside. Yeah. Both, 
both being able to hear your stories, which are incredibly entertaining, plus not feeling like I sat around and did nothing all week. Oh, it's, it's night. No, <laughs> that wasn't supposed to be depressing. That was supposed to be like, hey, I'm getting work done. I'm being useful. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So, uh, if you enjoyed it, or if you super didn't enjoy it, or maybe yeah. even if you're in the middle, let us know. There's plenty of ways to contact us. You can get a hold of us uh, through Twitter. We're at RhapsodyCast. We're on Facebook, facebook.com slash RhapsodyCast. Um, we're on Podomatic, RhapsodyCast.Podomatic.com. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash RhapsodyCast. You can contact me personally on Twitter, at Fridley Scent, or you can contact Nate on Twitter, at Adolfo Shabadoo. At Adolfo Shabadoo. We also have an email, RhapsodyCast at gmail.com, if you want your post to be super non-public. We're on iTunes, of course, RhapsodyCast. Uh, give us a review, one star, five star. I think there are stars in between those two that you don't see ever. <laughs> give us one of those. Um, let us know how we can make it better. Let us know how we can make it worse. Do you think it's too good? <laughs> Uh, let us know what you need to let us know or want to let us know. Uh, we want to thank Black Bear Combo for providing the music for most of this season and probably all of next season because their music's awesome and we don't want to give it up. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can find them on iTunes. Please do. They are great. And until uh, October 31st, I'm going to sign off saying this has been the free fantasy for your ear holes. Bye. Bye.